In this video, we're going to chat about how to decide whether or not to upload your show to YouTube and how to do it. Now, before we get started, it's important to note that YouTube is not a podcast hosting platform. You can't upload your podcast to YouTube and expect it to also be automatically uploaded to other podcast streaming sites like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Once you have your episode recorded, you'll want to find a podcast hosting platform. You can take a look at Buzzsprout or Anchor, and these will upload all of your episodes to the various podcast streaming sites like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. However, in addition to that, you can also optimize and upload your show to YouTube. First of all, you're already creating the content. YouTube is just another place to distribute it. YouTube is the second biggest search engine next to Google, so you can use SEO to extend your reach and find more people. It's easier to engage with your audience on YouTube and learn what they like and what they don't like because they can comment on your videos. And the last reason that you should upload to YouTube is they have better analytics than most podcast streaming platforms. Now, although there are lots of reasons to upload your show to YouTube, there are a couple reasons why you shouldn't. If you don't put the time and effort into optimizing the recording for YouTube, then there's no point in doing it. If you're uploading your show to YouTube, you should have a video of the recording process, not just your audio with a graphic attached to it. You also want to optimize your titles and descriptions to be searchable. So this means doing keyword research and planning ahead of time. Now let's talk about audience retention. This is a huge part of the YouTube algorithm, which means that you want to have people watching your videos for as long as possible. The longer people watch your video, the more YouTube will reward that video and place it in search and suggested videos. The longer your video is, the less likely that people will watch the whole thing. Unless you're somebody with an already loyal fan base, it will be hard to get people to watch the entire duration of your podcast episode. And this will mess up your audience retention rate. So by creating shorter clips from pieces of episodes that redirect to the full length episode, that will hook the viewers in and hopefully make them more inclined to watch the full video. We'll talk about how to do this coming up in a second. So the first thing that you want to do to get your podcast on YouTube is set up a YouTube channel for your show. When you do this, you want to optimize the channel description with keywords that go along with the topic of your show. You also wanna brand your channel with a cover image and a channel icon. You can use an online graphic design program like Canva for this. They have tons of templates that you can use to design your YouTube channel. You're also going to want a channel trailer so that when people stumble upon your channel, they know what it's about. To make this simple, if you already have a podcast trailer, then you could just upload your podcast trailer with your cover art as a video, or you could also just sit and talk to the camera and tell people what your show is about. Before you get into recording your episode, you want to plan ahead of time. So do keyword research. Take the topic of your episode and find out what questions people are asking about that specific subject. Formulate your notes and your content around those questions. It will help with organic growth and make sure that you are reaching the right people. Some sites that you can use for free keyword research are Answer the Public and Google Keyword Planner. Now it's time to record your episode. So like I said earlier, you want to make sure that you're including video content of the recording process during your episode. Some ways to do this are to set your smartphone up in person to record you as you're recording the episode, or you could record remotely on a podcasting platform like Riverside. By recording remotely, it means that you and your guest or your co-host, if you have one, are going to be looking directly in the camera. And this gives the audience a feeling of being involved in the conversation rather than just watching the conversation. Make sure you direct the conversation in a way that answers the questions that your listeners are asking based on the keyword research that you did. As you go, make notes of parts with valuable information that would make for a good clip, and this is going to make the editing process easier. If you've pre-planned, you should know when these parts are coming up. With Riverside, you can actually just hit M on your keyboard or click Mark Clip, and it will mark a clip so that when you go and you edit your episode in our editor, you'll see that the clip is marked here, and then you can fine tune and export these smaller clips that you already marked during the recording process. You can then use these videos as separate videos on your channel to promote the longer episode. Once your episode is recorded, you'll want to design your video. Make sure to include your podcast logo on your clips, and if you want to, you can include a branded frame to make it look more professional. In the same spot where you created clips on Riverside, you can also add in a branded frame and your logo to design it to fit your brand. 
If you aren't recording on Riverside, you can design a frame in a program like Canva and then layer it on top of your video in a program like Adobe Premiere or iMovie. You'll also want to design a thumbnail for your video. I suggest making templates because this is going to make the process easier and make your video feed look much more clean and organized. If you look at the Tim Ferriss show, you'll see that all of his thumbnails have the same structure. They include a still image from the recording of the interview, the name of the host and the guest, and it's colorful to make it pop. For your clips, come up with an enticing line that's going to encourage people to watch the video. Make sure you include a human face and make it colorful and dynamic. So you've pre-planned, you've recorded your video, you've designed your video, and now it's time to upload it. So create a title that's SEO optimized using the keywords that you already found during the planning process. On your clips, make sure to redirect to the longer episode in the description. And also when you're writing the description, make sure to use as many keywords as you can, again, from what you discovered in your planning process. You want to remember to add in your thumbnail, to add an end screen to redirect to another video on your channel to keep people watching your content. You can add cards throughout your video redirecting to other suggested videos. And you also want to add in video tags with the keyword research that you did. When it comes to a posting schedule, you can generate hype using your clips. So post one a day for a couple days leading up to the big episode release to get people excited for it. When you post, make sure that you're posting at your peak time. The way to find this on YouTube is by going to your YouTube studio, analytics, audience, and look at when your audience is online. The next step is to promote your video and try to grow your YouTube channel. So post your video to relevant Facebook groups, share it on your personal social media pages, and ask your family and friends to do the same. We hope this video has helped you get started on starting a podcast on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. And if you want even more tips about starting a video podcast, then definitely check out this video next where we analyze videos from three successful creators and take away actionable tips that you can implement on your own video podcast.